Welcome to the Lifetime Capital Gains Exemption in Canada video series. My name is John McElroy, and I will be walking you through the presentation today. We are on video number seven, using a family trust. It is one of the most popular structures out there. We said in the last video, ongoing purification wasn't the preferred solution. Family trust is probably the most preferred solution. Now, for a detailed discussion on family trusts, you're going to have to wait for our estate freeze video series that's going to be released soon. I'm going to give you an overview here, though. In this structure, the family trust owns the OPCO, or the operating company. Now, the three parties involved in a trust, there's a settler, trustees, and beneficiaries. The settler transfers property from one person, the trustee, for the benefit of another person, the beneficiary. The trustees hold and distribute the property for the benefit of the beneficiary, and of course the beneficiary is the one that receives the distributions of income, dividends, and capital gains from the trust. If there are three parties, settler, trustee, and beneficiary, let's take a little bit closer look at all three. The settler is typically a close friend or a relative, often a grandparent, and they'll settle the trust with a gold coin. Settling with cash can be problematic in some cases, so tax practitioners tend to avoid it if possible. Trustees, typically the taxpayer themselves, the business owner, and other trusted friends. We want more than one trustee to maintain continuity should something happen to the business owner. The beneficiaries are the taxpayer, a spouse if there's one involved, children if they're involved, and usually the hold co is also named as a beneficiary for the purposes of purification, and we're going to see how that works uh, very soon. Let's remind ourselves of the problem with the basic structures we've covered in previous videos. If you, own, if you own an OPCO directly, the problem, of course, is that there's a buildup of bad assets. If you own a hold co that owns an OPCO, the problem is, number one, you have to sell the hold co, and number two, you do have the buildup of bad assets, potentially in both companies. In this structure, the operating company is owned by the family trust. The beneficiaries, the taxpayer, the spouse, the children, and the hold co. What are the benefits? Well, let me go through the benefits in detail. Benefit number one. Dividends flow through to the hold co tax-free, which is a great way to remove bad assets. Now, you notice how this structure is different from the straight hold co structure. Because we can flow the dividends up to the hold co tax-free, no problem, which directly leads to benefit number two, which is that you only have to sell shares of the operating company. We don't have a problem with bad asset buildup in the hold co. Not that they won't have a buildup of cash, but it's not going to be a problem because we don't have to sell the hold co. We only have to sell the operating company. That's a huge benefit, no need to sell the hold co. Benefit number three, the capital gains flow through to the family member. It potentially gives everybody a chance to use their lifetime capital gains exemption. This is the favorite way tax practitioners involve multiple people in terms of taking advantage of their capital gains exemption. You have five beneficiaries, five times 800,000 is four million. That's a lot of money flowing in tax-free. The fourth benefit is that the taxpayer or the business owner, the trustee, can undo the arrangement if necessary. I'm not going to get into the details on how we do that, but this is a structure that can be unwound. There's a couple of reasons why that might occasionally happen. Again, a little bit outside of the scope of this module. But if it needs to be unwound, it can be unwound. Benefit number five, this is a discretionary trust, meaning the distributions can change year to year at the discretion of who? The principal trustee. So family members are putting in different levels of effort year to year. The distributions can also change year to year. And benefit number six is the trust itself pays no tax as long as all of the income and gains are distributed in the year in which they're received. So the trust 
doesn't incur tax as long as it maintains distribution. If it doesn't maintain distributions, it is taxed, and unfortunately taxed at the highest rate. But that's not the reason we put this structure in place. We put this structure in place to flow things through. We flow the dividends through to the hold co to keep the opco purified. So there's lots and lots of benefits associated with this. It's very often done in, conjun in conjunction with an estate freeze as well. So that keeps the sort of costs down where we can kind of double up and do two or three structuring at the same time. And yeah, family trusts are one of the preferred solutions. So that was uh, video number seven. My name is John McElroy. My phone number is 905-267-1043, 905-267-1043. Give me a call, send me an email. Love to get some feedback. Hope you're enjoying the videos and we'll see you on the next video.